Welcome to the Nagwal Zone. My name is Anam. Today we have a bit of an advanced topic to discuss. This is what happens after you lose your human form. What happens? What becomes of you once that happens? Here's a very interesting comment I received some time back from a user called Aromart. Thank you for leaving. It's a very long comment on one of my videos called losing the human form the link is appearing above as we speak check out the comment by him it's a very long comment it's a beautiful comment so basically he's describing his journey of losing his human form a few months back he has a few questions that i'll come to but i want to pick it up here to give you some context of this video he goes on to describe losing his human form and then says, But boy, did I have some real big rose-colored glasses on the whole time. My ego got so inflated that for a second I really did almost convince myself I was the next Jesus Christ or Buddha or whatever lol. Luckily, my knowledge in philosophy, specifically Taoism, kept me from going insane altogether. What in detail are the consequences of losing your human form while wearing rose-colored glasses? The second question is, can you divulge any general guidance related to this specific stage of post-human form reality of which I've described above? I know people who have gone insane because this happened to them, they had no reference point about it, they, there's no books exist, or there's nothing you can do, what, how do you navigate this? And what happens is that they lose, they start behaving oddly and their family members get a bit uh, upset or uh, like concerned, friends get concerned, they get sectioned or put away, at least for a while. None of that needs to happen. Toltec training ensures that you are well prepared for this very, very basic um, syllabus level of losing your human form. For in Toltec system, in the Toltec training syllabus, this is a very basic requirement that you would reach. All my apprentices, the first thing I get them to start moving towards is losing their human form, without a doubt. Every single one of them is you know, uh, steered toward that first. That's your first goal post. And authentically, not just deluding yourself that you know you're some big shot when you're <laughs> just nobody. That is why it is recommended in Toltec training, as you are gaining prowess in accumulating inner silence, you are also learning to become an expert hunter of your own self-importance. I can't stress this enough. Now, in Aromat's case, he wasn't even prepared. He wasn't looking. He wasn't training. So it just happened out of the blue. And there he was. Naturally, you'd start thinking, you know, strange thoughts about yourself, which have nothing to do with reality, right? You must become an expert hunter of your own self-importance, which starts with learning to become brutally honest and Catch your lies. Catch your lies. Almost all of us are chronic addictive liars to ourselves. We may pride ourselves on being very truthful to others, but we are chronic liars to ourselves on levels you wouldn't believe. Usually we cover our true, cover the truth within us, the truth that our conscience is telling us with not just one layer of lies. We cover it usually with two or three or even four layers of lies. And each layer is successively strong, more strongly denied by, by us. I come across this all the time, all the time with other human beings is they, they will lie or which it's basically self-delusion. Then you, you collapse that lie and underneath is another denial, another lie. It's a little bit stronger now. And you collapse that after digging through, wading through the muck and the sand 
there's another smoke screen thrown at you now. And then another, and eventually when there's no options left, they will have to admit the truth. And underneath all of that lying is, you know what? The need to be right. You don't want to admit that you're wrong. Mostly that's the case. So all these defenses and justifications <laughs> simply to not admit that we are wrong. This happens all the time. How does this tie into what Aromat is asking? Because these processes don't collapse if you lose your human form. These processes of lying to oneself do not collapse. Your sense of perception of yourself and your environment changes irrevocably forever and ever. There's no doubt about that. But our habit of lying to oneself is something we have to give up consciously. Our, when we lie to ourselves is what is called rose-tinted glasses. What actually is and what we think is, there's a big gap. It's called rose-colored glasses. So this is what I think is must be emphasized is we must learn to honestly express ourselves to ourselves first. We must learn this and stop with all the smoke screens and the um, you know, like Batman throwing those fog pellets, smoke pellets, so you can just disappear and the police is baffled. Where did Batman go? Yeah, that's what you do all the time to yourself. Lying, lying constantly and thinking that you're this big shot truthful person. <laughs> Beware of this. It's a very, very insidious habit that over time will convince you that you are better than you really are. I come across this virus so often that it is almost expected if I meet a human being, they will be suffering from this virus of pretending to be better than they really are. Very few, very few people are not ghosts. Very few people are actual real people. That's why a, told, a warrior relates so... You know, there's no way to say Castaneda was a fraud because you can't write a book like The Journey to Ixlan and that end bit where Gennaro is walking back from losing his human form and all he sees are ghosts. Read that section again right at the end. You, ca you can't be a fraud and write that stuff. You have to know what you're talking about. <laughs> you must. You have to. I know this for sure because... To, uh, do you know what I mean? You ha Anyone who is in that position will know this is true. Second thing, any guidance, how to navigate the post losing your human form era of your life. Arrow, what you must do, what you must start doing now, now, is you must find a path with heart. That is your path with heart. That is all that is left to you now. All the other stuff, due to your great, great good fortune, you don't have to deal with. Okay, most human beings are going to where you already find yourself. For you, the only thing left now to do, it is losing your human form is the simple stuff. This is where it gets uh, exciting and challenging at the same time, is you must now find your part, path with heart and walk it, right? Because there's nothing else for you to do. Literally, find that path with heart. And now here's something that I tell my apprentices. In fact, even yesterday I was uh, in a session with my apprentice. I was explaining to her that a path with heart and a path with art are very closely related. A path with heart and a path with art. Because a lot of people say, oh, but I don't know what I'm meant to be doing in my life or I don't really know what I like or what I don't like or I don't really know, I don't really know. Um, maybe I like, maybe, I, maybe I'm a sculptor, maybe I'm a this, maybe I'm a that, I don't really know. Maybe I'm supposed to 
uh, you know, learn about the Toltec path and that's my path with heart. No. The Toltec path is simply a system. It's not a path with heart. It's a system of knowledge. A path with heart, you got to... The, the bigger, the biggest clue is to look at art and start, take one art, whatever. Oh, but I don't really like painting or singing or dancing or anything. I just don't know what to do. Fine, pick one. Pick one. Art can even be skateboarding. Art can be skydiving. Art can be chess. Art can be becoming a saxophone player. I don't really know. Art can be it's a huge field, so don't think that you don't have choice. You're spoiled for choice. Pick one. Here's the way to pick one. Think back to your childhood. What were some of the things you were spending the most time doing then? Oh, we were always out. Me and my friend was all, were always out in the mountains or uh, out in the fields. We used to live in the country or whatever. And we were always out. Well, there's your clue right there. Outdoors. Your path with heart lies in the outdoors. What is it? Dig deep. Find out. Go. Check it out. Oh, when I was young, I was always dressing up dolls. Okay, great. Right there. Right there. Doll making might be a path with heart for you. Or making dresses for dolls, dolls might. I don't know. Start. It will lead you somewhere. It will lead you somewhere. When I was young, I used to love break dancing. I don't know, someone might say in the 80s. Fine, good. Dancing is your thing then. So go back, review your childhood. What were, what were some of the major things you were doing? Biking around town maybe, taking your BMX and just with your friends and just uh, hanging around, going to McDonald's. But what was the common theme there? BMX. You were bicycling around everywhere. Explore that. The point being, it's not the direction you are to go in. That's the problem because there are plenty of directions to choose. It's whether you are willing to prioritize this. You must choose a path with heart and you must walk it. Now, here's why we don't do this. Here's why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why we don't do this. And I'm not talking about RO personally here, RO Mart. I'm talking about the average man's world. Here's why people don't do this. Because to walk a path with heart, you will be required to become an ever Im more impeccable being. You will be required to pour yourself into that path with heart which means you'll be required to learn, grow, and get out of your comfort zone again and again and again and learn new things and learn about yourself and your predilections. That's a lot of work. No one wants to do it. You know what the average man would rather do? They would rather be told what's to be done, how to do it, and how much money they're going to get out of it. That's it. Right, So uh, the average man would rather take a job, be told when to go to the bathroom, when not, and take permission and be allowed. Today's world is a world of being allowed. Remember this, everyone who harps on about freedom, you, ain't got, you haven't got, you got zero freedom, never did have any. You are allowed by the powers that be. And the powers that be decide how much you're allowed and when you're allowed. Okay? Make no mistake about that. Don't delude yourself into thinking you're some kind of uh, free being in this external world of today. You're not. Find that path with heart and walk it with impeccability. With as much impeccability as you can, start on it. What is impeccability? Doing the very best you can and striving to do better each time, every time. That is the only thing that will keep you growing. It's all too easy to just cruise and lay your burdens down by the roadside and go to sleep. No, 
you're not meant to be doing that. You're meant to be growing and striving and um, wrestling with knowledge constantly. And because all knowledge ultimately leads to self-knowledge, that path with heart will show you more and more of your true self as you traverse that path with heart, as it matures within you. In my last video, I talked about the concept of sadhana. For you, Aromart, and people like you, if you are watching, a path with heart is your lifeline. All the philosophies and all the knowledges and the this path and that path is useless to you now because they only lead up till losing the human form. After that, it's on you. It's on you. Each moment now has become precious. You must walk that path with heart and your goal must be impeccability, growing and growing in impeccability. Your goal must become that. It must. It is a very, it takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of motivation, takes a lot of, um, you have to overcome a lot of laziness and uh, inertia at first. In a decade or so, it will become amazing for you. Amazing for you. It took me, um, how long has it taken me? Yeah, I mean, the number that comes to mind is like 17, 18 years now of walking my path with heart. I got two. One of them I've been walking since the age of 18, before I was even trained or any anything like that, right? It takes time for the path with heart to mature and teach you the higher levels of impeccability and becoming better and better at it and better at it and better at it. So start from here. See how you get on. Keep giving us updates. What is your path with heart? Let me know in the comments if you are fortunate enough to have found one. That is amazing. Well done. If you are not, keep these tips in mind. Go back to your childhood and what you are spending the most time doing on an average is that's the direction you look, look at and see where that leads. Hope this helps. Comment below what you think of what I'm saying and what you think uh, of a path with heart. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Walk in freedom. Stay connected. See you soon. Bye for now.